things here that uh, there isn't anybody, as far as I know, there's nobody left anymore who ran trolleys in Allentown. All the operators are gone. The last one died about a year ago, so. <coughs> so we, uh, the program tonight is gonna be in two parts. The first part, we're gonna take a trip from Allentown to Hallertown by trolley. So you're gonna see how it looked. Uh, it's, it, this is all, all these pictures were taken like between uh, the end of World War II and the end of the trolley service in 1953. And then there's a, a second part of the show uh, where we're gonna uh, talk about the South Bethlehem and Saucon, which was a small trolley line that ran from South Bethlehem to Center Valley, and it actually ran right down the road here. So, so we'll get started. And if anybody has any questions, just speak up. And, uh, this is the L, can everybody hear me okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, this is the LVT monogram. This is the, you know, the, the identifying feature that was on uh, most of the LVT equipment. You know, the Lehigh Valley Transit Company, you know, was a fairly big system. This is Allentown. There were lines that ran all the way up to Sladington and Slatedale, um, Bethlehem, Easton, uh, up to Nazareth. And actually they had lines uh, over in Phillipsburg, New Jersey as well. And the, the, the biggest uh, line of LVT was the Liberty Bell line, which ran from Allentown uh, down uh, through Quakertown, Perkinsey, Sellersville, uh, down in Norristown, and connected with the Philadelphia Western Railway, and then ran into uh, 69th Street Terminal. So, you know, you could go to lots of places. There were about 200 miles of track and, uh, you know, uh, lots and lots of service. Okay, uh, the Allentown to Bethlehem route uh, via Hanover Avenue and, and Broad Street. We're gonna start at 17th and Hamilton and we're gonna continue down Hamilton Street and then over Hanover Avenue and Broad Street into Bethlehem. And this is broad and new. And at this point, you know, we'll pick up the Hellertown car. But the, the uh, Allentown Bethlehem Mincy Trail Line continued on down Broad Street to what today is Stepco Boulevard, went over the Mincy Trail Bridge, and then down Daly Avenue and East Third Street past the Bethlehem Steel offices, and then back over the New Street Bridge, back to Broad and New, and then back to Allentown. Okay, now most of these pictures, uh, this particular one I know was taken by Randy Culp. Uh, a lot of these pictures were taken by Randy Culp and by Charlie Hauser. Charlie Hauser was an operator uh, for the Valley Transit Company. Rand Randy Culp uh, actually worked at Bethlehem Steel, but his dad was an operator for LVT, so you know, he, he gained a, a big interest in LVT and took lots of pictures, which for which we're glad that he did. If he hadn't taken, if these guys hadn't taken these pictures, I couldn't be here tonight you know, showing this stuff. But many of you might remember at 17th and Allen, there was a traffic light that stood right in the middle of the street. Is a little bit uh, now we're heading you're going to be heading toward uh, Bethlehem so this is around 16th Street 16th and Hamilton I believe the car is called a Buick yeah. 12th and Hamilton here's the original grass rail and I believe all this stuff is gone but there was a line that ran down 12th Street so you see the, the tracks switching off here to go down 12th Street these particular cars were the, the cars that were mostly used on the Allentown Bethlehem via Mincy Trail route. They were the newest cars that Leah Valley Transit Company had. They were built in 1930. There were 10 of them. <clears throat> this is a little bit farther on Hamilton Street now. We're down at, uh, at 10th Street. And there was a, a line that also curved off and went north on 10th Street. That was the 10th Street Loop. But you see the P P and L building and S S's. Yeah. I remember at this time, uh, downtown Allentown was the shopping district yeah, of the Lehigh Valley. You know, people came <laughs> here to, to do their shopping. This is before the mall sprang up all over the place and sort of killed the downtown. But there's the famous Hess Brothers store, the P P and L building over here on the side, and this was the Martin Mansion and the New York Florist, and off the picture back back over here would be the Allentown Library. And all that's gone over on this 
this side, that's where the hotel is today. The radio station in Bethlehem, WGPA. Yeah. The joke was that stood for Rico Purchase in Allentown. <laughs> oh, okay. It actually stood for uh, Global Printing and Advertising. That's what, that's what the GPA was. Okay, this, this is uh, getting closer now to 8th Street. You used to have Stein's Clothing uh, right at the corner. The, the bar building. And uh, this is one of the back buses that, uh, that that's, I believe it's for the, yeah, the 10th Street Loop. You know, that, that quit in 1949, so uh, that became bus at that time. But looking, looking down Hamilton Street, we see one of the older 900 cars. And the other interesting thing is, at this point, the track was in, in concrete. So when the line was, a, when, when the trolleys were abandoned, uh, most of the places where the track was in concrete, it was just paved over. So this all was in until 1972 when they built the so-called Hamilton Mall. Eighth and Hamilton, uh, looking uh, east on Hamilton Street. The interesting thing to note here is that all this stuff is gone. Everything. This is where the, the hockey arena is today. Even, even this building down here, which was later the first national bank, is gone. Another view at 8th and Hamilton, looking uh, the same direction, but now we see the other side of the street. Center Square. Remember the police tower that was there? And they had restrooms here. It wasn't a subway. Yeah. But there, there was a, I, I don't know which was which. There was a, a, a men's room and a, and a ladies' room. And they're still there, aren't they? They're buried. They're still there, but they're, they're, they're covered over. They, they, they were used, uh, I guess, up until sometime in the, maybe in the later 50s, and then they were closed off. And then when they built the so-called mall, they reopened them again. But I don't think they lasted more than about a year. They had too much trouble there with uh, you know, vandalism, vacancy, so they, they shut them off. But they're still underneath. There's, a, uh, there's I think, some transformers in that down there now. Notice the you know the taxi cabs too. It looks looks like they were Plymouths. Oh yeah, the other thing, one other thing to point out, this is where WAB had their studios for many years in the Coons and Shankweiler building. The other thing that Allentown had at that time is they had three major department stores. We saw Hess's, and now we see H. Lay and Company, and uh, right down here was Zalmer Army. So Allentown had had three major department stores. So again, th this was the shopping district of the Lehigh Valley. Sixth and Hamilton, the Nash Rambler there, parked on the curb, right by the curb. The Americas Hotel. And I understand uh, this side over here is, is, is being uh, demolished, uh, at, I guess, as we speak. Fifth and Hamilton. Notice the, the old courthouse, which still exists today, where the new courthouse is, or the, the current courthouse. Uh, there was an Acme store. The Colonial Theater was here. Here's the America's Hotel, of course, the PTNL building. But we're looking west on Hamilton Street. And looking down the street from that, from, from around Fifth Street, we see the we have Valley Railroad Station, Mealy's Auditorium. So all this is gone. This is where the city hall is today. The other interesting thing is a yellow Coke truck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was Mealy's Auditorium. Okay, now we're at the bottom of Hamilton Street at, at Race Street. Uh, this is the Allentown Terminal Railroad Station, which served the Reading Railroad and the Jersey Central. That's the Lehigh Valley Railroad Station. And this is the bridge over the Jordan Creek. And uh, the, where there was a railroad crossing right here. There's the power, you know, for the crossing, to, to control the crossing gates. And now we're down uh, 
right near the Lehigh River. This is Hamilton Street. Union Street comes up right here, and that's Front Street there in the, in the distance. This was the A and B plan. Uh, the only building that of this that's left anymore is the old office building, which is now part of the America on Wheels Museum. The old Hamilton Street Bridge. This was built sometime back around 1905, and it lasted until about 58. On, on this particular route, this is the only part of the route that was single track. You know, the, the single track across the bridge. The rest of the route along uh, uh, Hamilton Street, Hanover Avenue, Broad Street was all double track. This is the east end of the bridge. We see a caboose there on the Jersey Central Railroad. The A and B plan is, is right over here in the back. And where you see this stack, and that building, that was the powerhouse for Lehigh Valley Transit Company. Okay, now we're turning on to Hanover Avenue from Hamilton Street at Carlisle Street. Those, those buildings, well, there was a little gas station here, that's long gone, but this building is still here yet today. Okay, now we're up on Hanover Avenue, uh, just around Dolphin Street, which doesn't exist anymore. This was the Lehigh New England uh, Railroad Station. You know, Lehigh New England Railroad had a, a branch line that came in and terminated at this point. You know, we're looking looking towards Bethlehem. Uh, note one thing on here too is that the tracks along Hanover Avenue in general were not really right in the middle of the road. They were really more offset to the north side of the road. That's because this was originally the Allentown and Bethlehem Turnpike, and the transit company bought that turnpike so that they could operate the trolley car line <laughs> along the side of it. And it was originally built along the north side of the road. And as they expanded the road, they just uh, you know paved over at where the trolley tracks are and expanded the street. But you know the tracks were basically offset to the north. <laughs> Here, uh, we're passing Town Auto. This is over on Hanover Avenue, somewhere uh, before Maxwell Street. You know, that later became, uh, it was Ed Newman at one time, it was Booty, it was Bennett. Uh, I'm not sure what it is anymore. But, Used car a lot. Is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. it, but it was primarily a Chevy place, as you can see there, were, you know, some new Chevrolets there. Here's a Studebaker. You know, uh, you know, now we're here Randolph Street. You know, again, looking toward Bethlehem. An interesting thing here is that, again, uh, this track, a lot of this was in concrete, so it's, it's actually still there. Back around 2001, uh, they scarfed down the blacktop and exposed the trolley tracks. So, you know, I, I took some pictures, I know they're there, and then they blacktopped it over again, so I, I doubt in my lifetime I'll ever see them again, but they're there. Central Park. This is right at the border of Allentown and Bethlehem. At one time, this area was, was known as Rittersville. It was a separate community, but as Allentown and Bethlehem expanded, they, uh, they finally met here at, at what was uh, Central Park. Central Park was an amusement park that uh, Lehigh Valley Transit Company built and operated until about 1946, and it went into private hands, and by the early 1950s, it was basically gone. But it was a big park, and it really rivaled Dorney Park at one time. Yeah, yeah, I think maybe the next picture will show that a little better. Yeah, there's the Flatiron Building in the background, which is still there. Again, looking toward Bethlehem. Now, here's one place where the tracks definitely were on the north side of the of the road. This is Broad Street between. Club Avenue and, and Pennsylvania Avenue, looking back toward Allentown. So the Coca-Cola plant would have been down the street? Well, it's behind us, yeah. We'll, we'll get oh, it's that. behind us, okay. Yeah, it's behind us. Yeah, we're looking toward Allentown. Okay. And one of the interesting things here is that uh, when an eastbound trolley car came, it was actually uh, bucking uh, westbound automobile traffic. But most of the motorists were smart enough to get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to tangle with, with a trolley car. 
because you're going to lose. <laughs> okay, now we're at, at uh, Broad and Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh, notice the Divco truck for Freeman Dairy. And here again is that the track that we just saw basically along the side of the, the north side of the road. Which direction are we looking? We're looking toward Allentown. Mm -hmm. Looking west. Okay, there's the Coca-Cola bottling plant, which was there for many, many years. The building is still there, but I'm not sure what it's used for anymore. Then this is Pennsylvania Avenue and then Market Street. And I'm not sure what the name of this street is, but today that's sort of closed off. You know, they tried to. Mm -hmm. uh, that was North Street. Is it North Street? Okay, yeah. yeah they, they, they wanted to make the intersection uh, feel a little bit uh, uh, less complex. And there's a little park there now. Okay, on, uh, further on Broad Street around 16th Avenue, looking back toward Allentown. And actually, this picture was taken on the last day of trolley service, June 8th, 1953. People wait like that on the side of the street. Yeah. 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 Now this is uh, around 11th Avenue, uh, looking looking east. Oh, the trees. The second Second Avenue, looking west. And actually, actually, that particular car wasn't in service. It was actually going to Bethlehem Steel for scrap. Is this where the typewriter, oh, that's, is that the typewriter store there? Yeah, yeah, that's what it says, yeah, typewriter. Yeah. At Broad Street Bridge, you know, we're standing in Lehigh County looking over to Northampton County. You know, the Monocacy Creek is the border at this point between the two counties. You know, Bethlehem, the city of Bethlehem is actually split into the two counties. You know, part of the main part of Bethlehem is in North Anton County, but the West Bethlehem is in Lehigh County. Broad Street at Maine. And if you look closely, you can see, you know, there's remains of the track here. There, there were tracks on Main Street at one time, but that all quit around 1932. So this is looking east on, on Broad Street. Up here is the Boy Theater. Merrick Lumber Company was over here. So the Nile Theater wasn't in business yet then? Yeah. No, and there's, the food, there's a food fair. Wait, where was this year? Uh, 1953. In fact, this is another picture that was taken almost at the end of service in June of 53. Well, I can remember going to the Nile Theater before this, but I don't see it. Okay, this is the same place, but now we're looking, we're looking toward Allentown. You know, the, the, this big bank building, that's long gone. Again, here's Merrick Lumber Company. <coughs> Can everybody still hear me okay? Yes. There was something really interesting at Broad and New. There was what was called a Grand Union. A Grand Union was a double track crossing with switches in every direction. This was the only one on the system. You know, a lot of a lot of uh, trolley uh, operations didn't have any grand unions. In fact, the, the Philadelphia, which had a very very big trolley system and still has trolley cars today, uh, never had a grand union. But LBT had one, and here's where it was. I heard there were only two of those in the United States. Uh, no, there were more than that. Because I, I know there were two. In, there were two in Milwaukee. Uh, you know, there were there were a number of them, but LBT. Th this was the only one on LBT. And there's a couple up in Toronto today. Okay, as I said earlier, we'll get to Bethlehem uh, Hellertown car here. So we'll continue on Broad Street to uh, Mincy Trail, go across the Mincy Trail Bridge to Daly Avenue, and then go up to 4th Street, and then we'll take 4th Street and Hellertown Avenue to Main Street and Hellertown, and we'll end at Walnut Street. Now, on the return trip, if you, if, you went, if, if you went from Hellertown to Bethlehem on the return trip, you would continue the same way that you did to come in here until you got to the, to the Mincy Trail Bridge. 
At this point, you would continue on down Daly Avenue, go past the Bethlehem Steel Office, and then over the New Street Bridge, just like the Allentown Bethlehem Via Mincy Trail Park did. They ran this as a, as a loop. In Allentown, there was a track that went from Lost Cave. Too. Yeah, but that that was gone. That only that, that only ran a few years. That that it's that was still there. That, that was gone. You know that that disappeared. Uh, Sometime I, I believe that that disappeared before LBT. That was that was when it was uh, Allen uh, uh, Lehigh Valley Traction Company. So that's not a rumor. There actually was oh, yeah. line out to the Lost Cave. Yes, yes. It just got coming the rail up a couple of years ago. <clears throat> okay, looking west on Broad Street toward toward the Grand Union at at, at New Street. Here we see the American Hotel, which was torn down, I believe, around 1981-82. Again, we see the sign for the Boyd Theater. Here's the Farr Building. <coughs> Another picture at the same same place. And street names right there. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is 1953, January 53. <laughs> I mean, that was one of the other reasons a lot of people were glad to see the trolleys go. I mean, they, you know, because then the, the streets got resurfaced, the tracks got taken out, so, you know, people had a much smoother ride in their automobile. Okay, now we're, we're looking west on Broad Street at Linden Street. There were tracks here that turned off and went up Linden Street uh, to the uh, to Liberty High School up to Elizabeth Avenue. The South Bethlehem cars uh, used that route. Okay, uh, this is a special, this was a special charter. Uh, this was on uh, September 28, 1941. The Lehigh Valley chapter, NRHS, which still exists today, which I've been a member of for over 50 years, this was their first charter trip. And, and uh, they, they ran this car, it was new on the system. The LBT had just put it into service just shortly before this, and the, the chapter chartered it, and they ran from Allentown over to Easton, and then uh, down the Liberty Bell route to uh, the Norris Town. Oh. Uh, and this is the car. This is the car that, that has been saved, and it's up at the Seashore Trolley Museum in Kenny Bunkport, Maine. So if you ever get up to Kenny Bunkport, Maine, and you stop in there, you, you got to tell them that you want to see the Liberty Bell car. It's there. It looks like a weapon in front. <laughs> oh, that's the covered pilot. Yeah, that's at Laros' silk mill. Okay, now we're turning from Broad Street onto uh, what today is Stepco Boulevard. And this looks like a, a Henry J or a Kaiser, something, you know, long gone. Okay, looking toward the Mincy Trail Bridge, and the Mincy Trail Bridge traversed the Bethlehem Steel property. And the Mincy Trail Bridge as well as the New Street Bridge were toll bridges. And here's the toll booth. And crossing the Mincy Trail Bridge. Uh, there, there was actually a stop here for the employees of Bethlehem Steel. They could get off here and then uh, you know go down to the to Bethlehem Steel property.
this is Daly Avenue again. Uh, what we're looking at here, the reason there's a number of cars lined up, uh, these cars are going for scrap. This is really after the Hellertown line was abandoned. So they put a switch in here into the Bethlehem Steel property, and then they ran the cars in here, and, and uh, then they were scrap. That building, uh, it's not there anymore. Daily Avenue looking from over at 4th Street. He's, he's heading into, into Bethlehem, in the broader move. Another view, same place, but up on the, the road. Again, this is basically where the Sands, the Sands Casino is back in here. Here's the, one of the ore bridges. How could they climb a grade like that? Did they slip? No. no if, if the tracks were, were wet or if they, they had leads on, they had sanders on the cars too. They could drop sand on the rail to give them more traction. Now, this is looking uh, west on, on 4th Street. At this, th this particular area at one time was called Northampton Heights. You know, it was a separate borough until I think around 1920 when it was incorporated into Bethlehem. And it was, a, it was a residential and commercial area here for many years until the early 1960s when Bethlehem Steel uh, took over this area and then built the grain mill there. And there's the, the 4th Street Bridge, which uh, you know, was taken out about 15 years ago. And we'll, you'll, see, you'll see something here in, a, in, in just a little while. Uh, actually, I didn't realize it, but all this track from, from this point into Hellertown was all existed. It was paved over. It was never pulled out. Well, it did not mean you could stand in the back and all the car went to stay in the house, too. <laughs> you bad, bad. Okay, this is again in Northampton Heights on 4th Street, uh, looking toward Hellertown. Okay, then it went, into, it went into single track when it ran around that bend. East 4th Street. All right, backing up there, there was a track that had headed north into Northampton Heights and then turned <coughs> east, went through Shimersville yeah. and went into Freensburg and Easton. Right, that, that, was, that was part of Old Easton Transit, which became part of LBT. Yeah, there were other streets. There were, you know, there were other streets in there. I think it was on Pessimer Street, and there, you know, there, there, then I think the tracks were on Third Street. But yeah, you're 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 absolutely correct. It went across the bridge, then into Polk, into uh, Freemansburg, and eventually <coughs> ran alongside of the Freemansburg Avenue all the way over to Easton. Uh, this is uh, at what that was called Iron Hill. This is this is where you would you would drive today to go over to Freemansburg. You know, you're looking toward downtown Bethlehem. <clears throat> and now we're on Hellertown Avenue at Salkin Park. And notice up here, you know, there's some steam locomotives waiting to be scrapped. You know, crossing uh, under the lead into the Coke Works. You know, that was just taken out within the last 10 years. That's this, whole, this whole road has been has been under construction. They've been widening it. They're certainly dragging it out. Yeah, you, you, you can't recognize this spot today because if you went here today, you'd be at the interchange with Interstate 78. But this was airport siding. This is a passing, you know, the Hellertown line was single track with passing sidings. You know, that, that the last shot you were looking, you were looking toward Hellertown here, you're looking back toward Bethlehem. Here again is, is one of the Nashot signals controlling the operation of the trolley on the single track. There's Solomon's Dairy Bar on the left. Okay, but this is right, this is about right where the interchange is today. And ironically, you know, it's still in Bethlehem. Okay, now we're in Hellertown, we're at Main and High Streets, you know, looking back toward Bethlehem.
Yeah, that, that well, the building is still there today. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure what it is. But. I think it's a Is it? This is that main and Clark Street. The the building that you see here. This was actually one of the old Liberty Bell cars. This was car number eight ten oh. at Mom's oh. Diner. Oh. And that was there until sometime in the 1970s when they they demolished it. And uh, we got some of the some of the parts from that for uh, car 801, which was a sister car to that. And is up today is up at Scranton. I was there when they unloaded that car. I lived a block away. Okay. They brought it down and flat that tree. Right. I had I had some black and white pictures that show that. Uh, yeah. Back in the in the late 1930s, LBT underwent a modernization program where they, they brought in uh, secondhand cars from other properties and rehab them, and then they scrapped the older cars that they had. And, and uh, some of the 800 cars were sold off at that point, and some of the St. Louis cars were sold off for, for private residences and also for, for diners and restaurants. So this, this particular picture, again, these cars normally did not run to Ellertown. Uh, they, they normally ran the, the, the 900 Cars, not the 950s, but this car, this this picture was taken on the last day of service to Hellertown, October 26, 1952. Okay, this is just a little bit farther south from that last shot. You know, if you look closely, Mom's Diner's up here. You know, past the high school. Wow, what a shot. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, a, a senior living place today. Yeah. And that portion right there is still, you can still see that portion of the high school today yet, that's still there. Yeah. This is Heller Town Siding. Hotel. And the end of the line was at uh, Main at Walnut Street. So this again was taken the last day of service, October 26, 52. Another view at the same place looking uh, back toward Bethlehem. Yeah, when, when the cars got to this point, uh, what the operator would have to do is he'd have to get out and uh, change the poles. You know, take the, the pole that was in the back, pull that down, put the pole that was in the front up, and then go through the car and uh, flip all the seats and take the control handles from from the former operator again to the, to the new operator. That was called, you know, uh, changing. Okay, I, I took this picture uh, in, in Jan yeah, January 9th, 01, uh, when they were tearing down the 4th Street Bridge. But you could see you know, where the trolley tracks came up from Daly Avenue and then crossed the bridge. And then I was, a, I was really surprised to see that there were still tracks there in, in East 4th Street. And I just happened to go over there and see this, and, and about a day or so later, they were ripped out. Yeah. But there, there they are. And this was, yeah, this is in, in uh, uh, 2000, yeah, September 2000. And this is more recently, you know, they pulled the track that was in Hellertown, you know, Hellertown Road or Hellertown Avenue. And laying along the side like that at various places, twisted up like a pretzel. <laughs> but this is, you know, the widening of the road. <coughs> okay, that's the last slide on that. So now we'll go, we'll, we'll go to the other. Thank you. 
the green light on Third Street in South Bethlehem, they took the bus in any tax from the hills back in the Okay, yeah. yeah there's, and there's still a few places where it's where there are tracks, but you know it's all it's all buried under under black top. I know I saw them at third and, and do I saw them peeking through there uh, you know not too long ago. Yeah. Here comes that building. Okay, uh, this is this is the South Bethlehem and Saucon uh, Street Railway Company, which ran from 1907 to 1929. You know what we're looking at here is this is South New Street and this is Fourth Street. Hmm. So this is right at the corner of Fourth and New in, in South Bethlehem. <coughs> okay, a little bit of history. You know the company received its charter on August 18th, 1897. But it was almost 10 years later until construction began. And finally, in uh, later in 1907, November of 1907, service from South Bethlehem to Colesville began. And finally, then in, in uh, 1909, May of 1909, uh, the line extended then to Center Valley. In 1920, it was reorganized as Bethlehem Transit. 19, January 29th, 1929, was abandoned. And then a couple of days later, you know, bus service began with uh, by the Valley Transportation Company. You know, the South Bethlehem and Saucon was never part of LBT. It was a separate company. Now, I, this is sort of upside down a little bit. Uh, north is up this way. You know, this is north and south. I had to flip it this way, otherwise it would have been too small. But the line began at 4th and New, went that up, Went south on New Street to Packer, over Packer to Broadhead, up Broadhead to Summit, and then over Summit to Wyandotte Street. And then basically it went up Wyandotte Street Hill, and up at the top of the hill, there was a car barn. And then the, the line continued along the side of the road along the old Bethlehem Pike. This is about the area where we are right now. And, and it continued down along the old road. Again, you know, just it basically followed the old the old Bethlehem Pike until you got just about the center valley. Then it went on a private right away, and then it opened up over here along, um, you know, what today is the northbound lane to Route 309. This shows uh, the time it took it took you, uh, you know, to go from from Center Valley to, to South Bethlehem took 25 minutes. You know, the fare was 14 cents <clears throat> and it was only seven miles long. But they ran in every hour. Do you have a picture of the trolley car that went sideways around the corner? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a number of these pictures were taken by Fred Barber. You know, Fred Barber was a, an employee of LBT from 1926 till LBT quit, and he was with Lanta until, you know, until he passed away in 19, uh, 1990. But Fred, Fred was a, a, a trolley enthusiast, and he actually took pictures back in the 20s when nobody else, you know, even thought of taking a picture of a trolley. In fact, Fred used to tell me he, he used to get so tired of people asking him, "Why are you taking pictures of trolley cars? You know, they're always going to be here." <laughs> so what he started doing is he always carried his camera in a paper bag so people didn't know what he had. And then just before the car would get there, he'd take it out and take the picture because he didn't like being asked all the time about why he was taking pictures. I mean, people even today, they ask me, why am I taking pictures of buses? And if you don't take them now, you know, that it's gone. Uh, this is at 4th and New. You know, we're looking north on New Street. So we have Valley Transit you know, it's running here on, you know, coming coming down 4th Street and then turning on the New Street and crossing the Reading Railroad tracks, which used to be here. And then the New Street Bridge is right up here in the background. This this line just had little single truck cars. In other words, you know, four-wheel cars. You know, they didn't have big, big cars. Now, this is at the intersection of Wyandotte and Summit. You know, they're doing wire work here at the line an improvised line car. This is what was mentioned earlier. This was October 17th, uh, 
2010. <coughs> so the car came careening down the Wyandotte Street Hill and it couldn't make the turn on the summit and it crashed into that building. That, that accident was, was right here. And you can see this, the tracks came down here. So after that, the company was required to put in some uh, some, uh, some derail switches. Here again is another picture looking down Wyandotte Street and then uh, it would turn into Summit right down here. There's one of the, the uh, derail switches that was put in. So if the car lost, the, the, the switch was always thrown so that if the car came down here and didn't stop, it would go up here and then slow down and stop. It couldn't continue on down the hill. What the operator had to do is he had to stop here and the conductor would get out and throw the switch so that he could continue on down the hill. And did they have to get out and then reset it again then? No, it was, I, I think it was a spring switch. Oh, okay. So I think it was, you know, maybe he did, I, I don't know. I, I thought it was probably a spring switch that he had to hold open until the car got across. Here's the car barn at the top of the hill. Holy smokes. Yeah, again, Fred Barber took this. Right, can you stop here one second? Where was the one-room schoolhouse that was up on this? Now, was it across the street from here or next door to this? Uh, across the street, I believe. The, the schoolhouse was on the... This is on the east side of the road. Okay. The schoolhouse was on the west side, wasn't it? Uh, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. West side? Okay. And yeah, this is about where, where the road goes up to uh, what used to be Channel 39. Okay. Right. Okay, there was a gas station. That's right. There was a gas station there. This is down at Colesville. This is uh, up at, at Oops. Uh, you know, two cars collided. You know, it, it's difficult to run uh, two cars in opposite directions on single track without having a problem. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, uh, at Bradensville, you know, along the old Bethlehem uh, Pike side of the road. This is uh, between Freedensville and Center Valley. Uh, they also had a snow plow, which they used in the winter time to clear the snow so that they could operate. And this was the end of the line at Center Valley. Uh, here are the tracks of the Liberty Bell route. The original Liberty Bell route ran right down through Center Valley. It wasn't until 1925 when they relocated it to where it was uh, until the end. And you can still see this spot today because that, that house is still there that today. This was called either Center Valley Junction or we Weaver's Junction. I don't know, maybe the people who lived here were Weaver's, I, I'm not sure. But this, this home is still here. You're, you're looking, you know, this is, this is going toward Allentown this way. So if you're going north on 309, you pass this house and look, that, that's right where the trolley ended. And as I said, on February 3rd, 1929, Lehigh Valley Transportation Company, which was a subsidiary of LVT, uh, began bus service, you know, to serve this area. And I, I don't, I'm not sure how long it lasted, but it, it did last more than 10, 10 years, and then that was gone, so there's, there's no service at all today. This was the, the schedule, they, you know, they basically ran hourly service. Notice, you know, they, they have Center Valley spelled the wrong way. <clears throat> no spell checker. <laughs> this was interesting. In, in 1982, uh, Penn got scarfed off the blacktop on Wyandotte Street, and one of one of the fellows I worked with uh, said, "Hey, you ought to go over there. There's trolley tracks that are showing." So I went over and snapped this picture. But this is looking down the hill, and down here. Just past here is where it turned on the Summit Street. <coughs> Another view looking up the hill, but you know the track was all in, just paved over. And then in 05, they did it again, and there's the track. I, I don't. It's it, it, it sort of amazes me that yeah, it's a brick foundation. You know, they just paved over it. You, you would have thought they would have torn the whole thing up and rebuilt it, but. They just paved over it, so it's still there yet. 
okay, that's that's all that I have. You know, if anybody has any questions, I thank you for you know for your attention. You know, I'll be I'll try to answer any questions you might have. Well, it's kind of like time travel. <laughs> <laughs> You know where mom's the power of the oh. 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 Because you know the, the traction companies generated power to run their cars, and then they sold off excess power, you know, to to the public and to you know to, to businesses. But then the power companies, you know, that the power business got so big that it got split off. So PP&L actually is a you know got to start with LPT. But they you know they bought the power, they bought the AC power, and then they converted it to DC. And they had substations that were located uh, along various parts of the line. Like on the Liberty Bell Route, you know, there's a substation at the top of the hill, which is still there. With McCullough the Paving has it. Uh, there's a substation down at uh, down at Coopersburg, and there was one down at Quakertown, there was one down at Lionsdale. Going the other way, like up to Northampton, there's a, there's a substation in Catasauqua, it's still there yet. There's substations along the Sladington line. That's that's what they did. They would they would run AC power to the substation and convert it to 600 volt PC. But most most trolley operations ran on, on 600 volt PC. That was pretty much the standard. And, and the other thing we have Valley Transit Company too was standard gauge. It was the same gauge as the railroad track. A lot of the trolley systems in Pennsylvania were what they called wide gauge. You know where they were actually five like five feet two and a half inches rather than four eight. Remember the nickname of the limited? What the Death Valley Limited? Or the killer. Yeah, well, that, that was because, yeah, I, I heard people say it was the Death Valley Limited. The reason uh, there was a serious accident in July of 1942, uh, just north of Norristown, where about 13 people were killed. Uh, the limited car number 1003 you know, hit a, a freight car, C14, head on, on a single track. And the, the loser of the car, of course, was the passenger car. The freight car, you know, was was a you know substantially bigger and heavier car. So it just tore into the the lighter car, and, and uh, like I said, about 13 people were killed, including the operator. And it was the operator of that car who was at fault. You know, he he, he left uh, the, the passing side when he shouldn't have. That's what we used to call. Yeah. When the first trolleys came to Ellerton, they were only four wheels on. Yeah. We were like little tuner group trucks. Right. And yeah, just like, just like that South Bend on the talk. And if they got too many people on board, from Frosher's Drug Store had to the high school. <laughs> Some of them had to get off and walk up the hill. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Other than the map that you had of the uh, line going from Bethlehem to Center Valley, do you have any other details? Of that line. Not really. I, I have to look. I have an older county map. I was going to look at it and I, I, and I forgot. It may have showed the line on there, but a lot of times you have to take things with a grain of salt on those. A lot of times there's, there's mistakes. You know, they, you know, I, I've, I've seen errors on some of those early maps that I know are wrong. But uh, no, I, I, and I, like I said, I'm not really sure. It, it ran, it, it was along the side of the road. I, which side of the road, I, I don't know. It's a historical book on that uh, trolley crash on Summit. After the crash, they, they rerouted the line down through Hellertown. They took it off of Wine Street because of the accident. It says it in the oh. in the Hellertown historical book. Yeah, that's not correct. No? Okay. No, what they did is what I showed you. They, 
they actually put derails in to okay. you know, control the you know, the cars coming down the hill that they wouldn't continue on if they right. lost their brakes they would have to go on the you know on that incline and it would stop so you know the, the south like the south bethlehem and socket that the line on mine that's used that that was never part of lvt it never ran to hellertown okay so they said after the accident yeah. they rerouted it yeah don't believe everything you read no <laughs> Is there, seen that, oh. That's a pretty unsafe way to travel. How fast did the trolley go? And it, I mean, you're working on metal on metal. How were they able to stop? It would seem they had a lot of accidents. Were oh. there a lot of accidents? Not really. Okay. You know, one of the things you have to remember, too, is, you know, during the heyday of the trolley, there wasn't as much automobile and you know, vehicular traffic. So, you know, that, that certainly helped. Uh, as far as the speed of the cars, it depends it depends what line you're on. Now, like that South Bethlehem and Saucon, they probably went, you know, 10 miles an hour. You know, that was about it. Uh, except when that car creamed down the hill. Uh, the Liberty Bell route, which the LVT ran from Allentown down to 69th Street, you know, that could go at speeds of excess of 60 miles an hour. Because they had a lot of private right away that they could, you know, open up the car and they, they, they did move. Uh, most of the other cars, like the city cars, would be mostly, you know, like 20, to 30 miles an hour, that was about it. Was there, is there any map evidence or schedule evidence of the line that ran the Lost Cave? Like, do you have any? No, I. You've never seen anything no. on a map or on a schedule? No. Hmm. And, and as I said, that did, I don't think that lasted more than about five years or so. That was, that but you, was think really you think they would have published a schedule about, yeah. you know, if you want to go to Lost Cave, here's the time. Yeah, it, was, it was before 1900, as I recall. Okay. Yeah. Mom's diner, one Halloween night, the operator to the trolley was in having coffee. These guys went in it and then fired it up. They ran it to the end of the hell town. <laughs> so what happened when the operator came out? He didn't find a trolley. I don't think he was very happy. <laughs> Not a happy camper. You never pulled a monkey on the trolley car. No. Uh, no. You didn't have any fun with yeah. it. <laughs> no, I, 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 did, I, did ride, I did ride trolleys an LVT, but that was like before 1947, because in 47 we moved to Emmaus, and uh, you know the trolley cars in Emmaus had been gone since 1931. So then I had to ride the bus. Yeah. Did you have any pictures or a record of the car born in Allentown? Oh yeah. You mean Fairview? Yeah, well, in fact, an interesting thing, if you go there, uh, the, it, inside the old car barn, there's still tracks. Yeah, they ran down. Yeah. And, they had a, but it's and there's a switch in there. Yeah. 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 The people there are very nice. I've been out there a number of times, and, and uh, you know, they, you know, if you, if you tell them that you're interested in seeing that, you know, they take you over. They, they just paved over the tracks that ran in. Well, that, that was pulled out. Was that pulled out? Yeah, that was all pulled out. I just, yeah, I have pictures of that when they pulled what it year, out. Do you know what year they pulled it out? It was sometime back in the 80s, I believe. Oh, that was late. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was all. I that whole yeah, right, right, was all. They used yeah. it for buses, and yeah. that's when they paved over. But I never yeah. they pulled them out. Yeah, yeah that, that was a bus garage until yeah. the last trolley. They used right, it as a bus 53. Garage. 53, then they, they moved everything over to Fairview, yeah. which is, you know, over by the bus. Yeah. The barn. Yeah, somebody else had a question. Yeah, I used to ride the trolley from Hawk and Dockwood down to Fullerton. I mean, did you ever see the hollow? Do they have any pictures yeah. of that from West Caddy to Fullerton? Yeah. They used to go like mad down there. Yeah. Yeah. They go really fast. Trolley. Yeah, I, you know, I, I have, I've done a program in Northampton already on that. I have a, you know, I have yeah. a, Well, yeah, well, one of the other things, with, one of the other things with the ice, too, was if, if you got a lot of ice on the overhead wire, yeah. you know, that, that created problems. Because there was a big ice storm in uh, January of 1948, and actually what, what the transit companies did that time, they ran some of the big, heavy uh, cars that they normally ran on the Liberty Bell route, they ran them over, you know, like into Bethlehem to try to, you know, uh, get the ice off the tracks mm -hmm. and, and, and off the wire. And, and it was like lightning, you'd see, you know, it would really flash. 
Isn't there a big difference at Seventh and Hamilton Street, like the where there was it was like a platform or something? Yeah, there. yeah, there was a waiting platform on Seventh yeah. Street, you know, for the yeah, banking right. car. Hamilton Street. Yeah. Did all these things uh, transport like the mail or things or newspapers? Uh, I, I remember well, one time seeing one stop at Boston Post Store and they took something off the trolley car and into yeah. yeah, newspapers, yeah. Well, and then there was also freight that was run. Um, yeah. You know, they had freight, they had actually trolley freight cars that, that ran. Uh, at the end, they basically just ran between East and Bethlehem, <coughs> downtown, and then down to Philadelphia. But at one time, they, they, they ran trolley freight, like over in Macungie, they ran trolley freight up to uh, Slade. Yeah. But, the, you know, the, the trolley freight all quit that when the Liberty Bell group was abandoned. Well, we thank Mr. Peters for the level of detail that these folks that are in is amazing. They know what the numbers of the cars were. They know when they switched tr trucks on the trolleys. They know for what trolley car number it came from and which one it went to. I just can't get over the level of detail. They, they remember all the operators' names and where they worked. It's uh, a lot of storage up there. Good memories. Oh, Judy, do you have a map about your uh, bond box book? Oh, I have one. Um, and it was his interest. Yeah. Yeah. Stand, stand yeah. up and make an announcement. Okay, I will. I'll be outside there.